Hey everybody, I guess we're uh, I guess we're going out live on um, going out live on Facebook, and uh, that should be okay. Let me just make sure of this because they've they've set up a whole new way today to do things at the last moment, of course, and uh, so I have to kind of check and make sure. Okay, there we are. We are on. Okay, good. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let me put on my earphones, <laughs> and I'm a little loopy today because I uh, took some a pill last night that makes me loopy. <laughs> oh man! Oh, we got a lot of people waiting, so let me admit everybody. Uh, here we start going. Oh, we got whoa, whoa, whoa! They're just all coming in at the same time. I'm in Kifu in Middle Village. Yeah, there, there we are. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to turn something. Where the hell is the freaking rice around here? Hold on a second. Amazing place. I'm to... Okay. Hey, where the hell is the freaking rice around oh, Is everybody there? I mean, I'm going to have to cut out, I think, Alex, because I'm losing the picture a little bit here. Okay, well, then don't call us using that, okay? okay I'm sorry. It's the freaking okay. supermarket. I think it's got a little room sealed. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. That's annoying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I hope he finds the rice aroni. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear it's sort of a treat in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, not really. <laughs> oh man, I just I'm, I'm just all out of it today because I took I took my nice pill last night, which is my <laughs> my neuropathy. And then all day long I'm bumping into walls and I can't figure out this or that. And then how many of you have had this happen or having it happen? I use Chrome, okay, as my browser. And now it's saying all your passwords have been compromised. What? And they gave me like 120, 170 compromised passwords. Well, I've been using the same password for years for stuff that I don't even use anymore. And it's going for all of those. And I don't know where it got compromised. I'm sure that somebody like, I don't know, Google said, oh, all of a sudden, all our passwords have been compromised. And then all of a sudden, they say, OK, they've all been compromised. Change them. And probably I'll never run into any problem. But I mean, I'm sitting here trying to change things. And I haven't got time to change 176 passwords. Don't bother. <laughs> Some of which I haven't used. Yeah, but you know what happens? The browser keeps popping up saying, this password may have been compromised. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> a new browser. Yeah, they're doing, you, they're doing you a favor. They're doing me a favor. Yeah, it's yeah. not Chrome that that's tell it that that compromised your passwords. It's recognizing because it saves your passwords. Yeah. yeah, in Chrome. Yeah. So just go through the list of all of your your stuff. I I can show you offline how to do it, and then change the ones on accounts that actually have your credit cards and your money. Don't worry right. about the Right. If it's your bank one. account, change it. If it's yeah. American Airlines. Who cares? You know, well, one of them was Hulu. Another one is Express Scripts, which is my medical stuff. So I got to change those. But, yeah. you know, I mean, it just, I, it, but it, it just annoys me. I mean, the browser doesn't say, if you don't want to receive this message, then just click here. No, every time I go to some site, it pops <laughs> up again. It's the, same, it's the same guy who won't let you turn off the Amber Alerts that make your phone yeah, go up at two in the morning. Yeah. Is, yeah. is this all the stuff that's made our life better? Is that? Oh what yeah. It is? You know. Well, you, you got to change your password from from the same password that I have for my luggage. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you got to get rid of that one. No, <laughs> I'm gonna add that one. <laughs> you gonna switch it to five, four, three, two, one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll probably never figure that one out, right? <laughs> oh, did I say it out loud? Shit. Yeah, I, I gotta go. Sure. I gotta I gotta change some passwords. <laughs> <laughs> well, you My know what everybody has been compromised. Hold on. <laughs> According to statistics, or as Letterman used to call it, statistics. Uh, according to statistics, the most used password is password. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think because that won't get compromised anymore, <laughs> I think <laughs> I'll go, I'll just, you know, all what happens, somebody probably hacked into like, you know. One, one service or something out there and um, got, you know, all the passwords from that particular service. Now, it doesn't mean that that password is, of mine is going to be compromised. And in fact, I don't care if I, somebody, as the old joke goes from 
uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. I don't care if they steal my identity. Now someone else will have a life. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should change your password to incorrect. So that when it comes up, it says your password is incorrect. You go, oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here's the other thing. So I, one, of the, one of my had to change was my Hulu account. Okay. Because uh, my Hulu account is, had, had been compromised. So I, I went and then it asked me to change it. And then I, so I didn't have a, a password anymore. I already changed my password. So now I got to go to my Roku, mm -hmm. change the password there, which I then have to type in A L E X at, mm -hmm. get, yeah. you know, and it, that takes a half hour. Okay. Yeah. Or I can do the thing where I go onto the computer and I put it, the uh, activation code for my Roku into the computer, but then I've got to write it down in one room and then change it in another room. Yeah. But do you really care if someone in India can use your Hulu account? Well, <laughs> I'm very protective of my Hulu account. I don't know why, yeah. but anyway, so but then, changing. If, if you have an Apple TV, which I also have, it's easy to change. You go in there and it says, oh, what's your email address? Which email address you want to use? And it gives you a list and you put that in and then you just into your thing, you just talk out the very, the password. It takes seconds, okay? But Roku hasn't gotten news that Apple's been doing this for years and it's much easier to do on Apple than it is to do on Roku. Roku, have you ever, have you ever how many here have a Roku, anybody? You do. So you know that every time you add something to your Roku, you then have to reorder it in the, the into the um, into the thing. You know, you into the to, grid. The, into the grid. Right. Where you don't have to do that with Apple, because if you change it on one machine or add it on one machine and you put it in a certain place on one machine, on one Apple TV, it does it for all the Apple TVs. Now, why Roku can't do that, I have no idea. But Google's, this is our friend Trucker Steve. He's out there. Where are you right now, Steve? Uh, right on top of Donner Pass. Donner Pass? Whoa. Oh, that was, was the one where Marjorie and I got married. I was there yesterday. <laughs> got, got a strange craving for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> who, who was there later? <laughs> Len, right here. Len, Len you were up, up in Donner Pass, huh? Yeah, we went up to Reno and we came home. Stopped for lunch in Truckee, went down to Donner Lake. It was gorgeous. They had Donner. They um, they had this uh, pass. In case people don't know, those who are watching this, uh, uh, that goes between Lake Tahoe and the other side, whatever that is. You go Sacramento. Up, a Donner Pass, where of course years ago a bunch of uh, people called the Donner Party uh, didn't do too well up there. Uh, they all no. died. Well, no, they wound. Some of them. Some of them did. Some survive. of them survived. But uh, from then on, they couldn't go into a restaurant and order human any longer. So, uh, it was because they started eating each other, which and there's a joke there somewhere, but I'm not going to make it. Uh, uh, what I always wanted to do when I went into a restaurant up there was they said, uh, what's your name? I want to put you down so that when we have a table, we can call you. And I said, Don Donner? Donner party of two. <laughs> and they would say Donner party of two or Donner party of four. Yeah. So, but, it, um, but I love the Donner Pass. And it used to be, they changed the road. It used to have a different road that went up. And it was very, uh, you know, you really had to take a lot of turns and curves. And so now it just goes straight over. Wasn't it snowing when we were there, Alex? Yeah, it was snowing when we were there. Yeah. But, but in the old days, I used to take girlfriends to Reno and I would stop on Donner Pass and out on one of the little big giant humps of hill out there. I'd just sit there and kind of, you know, woo the, woo, the, woo the chick under the under the stars, so. <laughs> Look at the face on I Marjorie. I think, Steve, that's more than you wanted to know about Donner Pass, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, just look over to your right. That's where Alex fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, the good old days. Remember them, dear? Honey? Remember the good old days? <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so how are all of you? Uh, I'm a little loopy today, as you may notice. Uh, do I sound loopy? No. 
I'm I'm also in a password problem here. So, mm. but anyway, how you doing, Sheck? Very good. I got some very good news today. What was that? One of the most mediocre late night talk show hosts in history has been hired to for a revival of You Bet Your Life. Okay, the most mediocre talk show host of all interviewers. Time. Interviewers. Interviewers. Uh, and you bet your life. They're gonna yes. I mean, that? that's a show where you're interviewing people. Correct. I mean, at least I, the game was never important. No, it was Groucho interviewing people. Yeah, yeah. So let me think. The world's worst interviewer. Most mediocre. I don't want to call him the worst. Oh, most mediocre. But mediocre. Is it a man or a woman? A man. He huh. lasted twenty years. Leno. Yep. Oh, no. Oh, wow. No, no thanks. Mediocre is kind as far as I'm concerned. And today on You Bet Your Chin. You know, <laughs> it, it, you take a show, I don't know why they do that. You take a oh. show that was identified with a certain human being, okay, who was known for doing that show. And without him, it's not really why the show was popular. Mm -hmm. And then you say, well, Remember Bill Cosby? It was a big, right. it was a big show back then. We well, make a big show out of it again. No, no, it wasn't the show. It had nothing to do with the game. Is this going to be an NBC show, Shecky? What? Is this no, a syndication. I don't know where. Yeah. Because you remember Bill Cosby did the show like twenty-five years ago, and it died a very quick. Yeah, day. not died quickly. Yeah. It, it, just nothing new under the sun. Do we have to keep rehashing the same stuff over and over? Seems it's, like, <laughs> yes. I mean, if you were to get somebody to do You Bet Your Life, who would you get? Gilbert. Huh? Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> Bobby Slayton. <laughs> I hear Steve Harvey's not busy these days. I, I, oh, I'd say, oddly enough, Shecky, that Letterman could do a pretty good job of it. Yeah, but why would you? You know, he turned 74 last week. What does he need it for? No, what's he? And need why do you want to be compared to Groucho Marx? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, Leno is—he's uh, a piece of annoying. Work. He's, he's annoying. An annoying guy. He's a piece of work. He's a piece of work. Uh, you know who would be good at it? Craig Ferguson would be good at it. You know, Craig. I've seen Craig. Oh, Ferguson. enough with Craig Ferguson. He's not all that good. No, he 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 blew it. Is what he did. He, he was did. A What'd you say, Shecky? He was a dry drunk. He was a dry drunk. Okay. <laughs> yes. The worst kind, by the way. Yes. But at least they can drive. Uh, but <laughs> you know, um, uh, he, yeah, he, he. I liked him a lot on that show. I, I thought he was. You, you and I argued about it many times about how good I thought he was. But then he he left that because I don't know why did he leave it. He felt he needed. Uh, uh, I think he got a game show. I don't even remember now. He got a game show. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But why would you leave? What is a very important? Um, it was twelve thirty. Yeah. I think that might have had something to do with it. Yeah. Okay. And no well, one was offering him eleven thirty. Right. Well, who, uh, by the way, hold on a moment. Who is Music Bill 23? Are you, 120? That's the guy that never seems to talk. Are yeah, you there? We saw his Bill? face for a second and then the background. Uh, oh. Yeah. Are, are oh. We've been through this like three times, four times. Music Bill, come in. Are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but we can't see you because you're trying to use that see a garden. background thing. All I want to do is watch the show. Oh, well, then go on to Facebook and watch the goddamn thing and don't bother us here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been back. Uh, change your passwords. So I'm now sure that he's gone, do I have to my password? My first, and <laughs> I love the saga of Music Bill. This is great. Yeah. Do, yeah. Well, now that he's gone, do I have to put grass behind me? Uh, 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 yeah, let's all put grass behind us, okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, it's a, yeah. Uh, I hate those backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, I have a green screen that I use on the late night show, but it's a green screen. <laughs> it's not, you know. Andrew, not... yours are the best. Huh? Oh, well, Andrew does. Oh, I turned off my background. Now I'm actually, this is where I am. 
<laughs> but, but Andrew is is using a green screen and it looks clean and it's you know down the rabbit hole fun with it and so on but when you do the other thing let me see if I can do it with mine um, because I can I can let me see here where are we yeah the, the virtual background doesn't work you end up with your hands disappearing yeah this is this is what happens with the with the virtual background here we go here I am in San Francisco <laughs> see how bad that is yeah. The green screen doesn't do that horrible background yeah. thing. The Chamber of Commerce of San Francisco just called me and asked you to stop. Yeah. <laughs> they were in my earpiece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Alex, do you consider yourself a Bay Area guy or a New Yorker? Uh, you know, that's a good question. That's, that's a really good question. I haven't figured that one out. Uh, I'd have to think for a second. Shecky, am I a New Yorker or, or a San Francisco? Well, you grew up in San Francisco. Yeah. No, so that's where your roots are. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you're by coastal. But so am I a New Yorker? How do you, how do you identify? <laughs> what you're good at? <laughs> but you spent you well. You spend more time in New York. I don't. Think? I don't spend any time in California. So I mean, you know. No, I'm saying over your 81 years. I, I think what what. Mark is ask, Mike is asking is a very um, um, psychological question of of where uh, where do I identify my myself? You had your best radio career in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Marjorie, what would you say? Am I a San Franciscan uh, or am I uh, a New Yorker? You're a uh, grumpy old New Yorker. A what? <laughs> A grumpy old New Yorker. A grumpy old New Yorker. Yeah, old. you become a grumpy old New Yorker. I'm grumpy. I'm grumpy. Do I sound grumpy, folks? I know you as a New Yorker, as a grumpy transplant New Yorker. I mean, you've been back here 20 years now. Grumpy? <laughs> no answer. What, what were you going to say? What was your question? I said it. I'm, I, I'm grumpy. When you, when you don't take your nice pill, you're grumpy. <laughs> it's true. He takes a nice pill and a grumpy pill. No, I don't take a grumpy pill. I just don't take a pill at all, and that makes me grumpy. Well, there we go. I'm Uncle Grumpy. Wreck, <laughs> uh, did you say something there about me? and my... No, I said you've been back in New York 20 years now. Is it 20 really? years? Has it been that long? It's not 20. You came back in 2002, didn't you? Four. He came 2003, back. Two thousand three. Two thousand three. Four. Three. That's when we met. You want to yeah. bet? Well, but I was back and forth for a while. I was here, and then I go back and I get stuff. We came out. You and I came out together and drove. Yeah, we made California the drive with my stuff. Uh, no, Steve's stuff. St well, stuff for Steve. Yeah, we had some uh, electronic equipment and crap like that. You know. And, and then we got he the uh, he will never forgive me for Monument Valley. Nope. <laughs> because Monument Valley, we had to go out and take the car if we wanted to really go into it. The back roads. Yeah, so to it speak. was bumpy, and I had this big electronic equipment in the back of the uh, <laughs> of the of the car, and I didn't want to ruin it by going on the very bumpy roads. So Shecky has always been very mad at me that he never. We should have left it at the ranger station when we <laughs> drove. Home. Yeah, yeah. Here, what? Watch the oscilloscope for. Well, we still we'll saw around. Monument Valley. I mean, there were you know all those buttes and everything. But is there another valley near it where John Ford did most of his pictures? He didn't do it in Monument Valley. No, no, I think he did it in Monument Valley. There's one kind of like down the road. That was an alternative that he used that had the same kind of I don't know. You know, because Monument Valley is very iconic about it. If you show say America and then you show a picture of Monument Valley, you know. Mm. So but how many have been to Monument Valley? Anybody? Oh really? Really? <laughs> well, it's a bit of a trek. I mean, it's not like, you know, off I eighty. Yeah, it is off the beaten path. We had to kind of go off of our route. And then we the, stayed at that motel, the Monument Valley Motel or something did overnight. Did we really? I can't remember. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, we stayed overnight. Shecky, I got to say this about Shecky. He is the greatest navigator. 
that you could have sitting in the other in the in the uh, uh, passenger seat of a car because he was looking at me he said turn left here oh wait a minute we're in a traffic jam if we can get out of it by going and he's got the map and everything yeah we we, we went past abraham lincoln's actual birthplace by accident yes well <laughs> now there is a question as to whether that's really his actual birthplace what that is is the log cabin they moved from his actual birthplace to that location. But then that was when we got stuck in that horrible traffic jam where like 10 yeah. people were killed. Right. Ooh. So the big question about that log cabin is, was Lincoln identified as a San Franciscan or a New Yorker? <laughs> he's just like you. He's a, he's a New Yorker, but he's bi-coastal curious. Well, I, I you know, I, coastal curious. You know I, 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 get, I get very reminiscent for San Francisco. You know, I mean, I I keep saying I would love to go back there, but then I talk to to, to Bubbles, somebody like Bubbles, Larry Bubbles Brown, and he tells me it's horrible now. Now tell me, Len, is it horrible, San Francisco? You know, the city itself. I love the city. It's beautiful to go in. It's the most scenic place in the country, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. But as far as the homelessness and that sort of stuff and businesses being closed, it's not a great place. Yeah, but he told me I would come back and hate it. It, it sucks just walking around it's, the streets. And it's, very, yeah, it's very different, I think, from 20 years ago. I, I would say that. I think the homelessness has been really um, more prevalent now. And even all the way out here into the suburbs. Well, you um, understand the new San Francisco I truly reminisce about is, is 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Sure. Yeah, you know, and and it was a different town. It was it was the town of you want to see San Francisco as it was when I was growing up, Vertigo. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect perfect example of that, uh, he, mm -hmm. and he romances that city in that film too. Uh, and it, it, it I remember it that way. You know, I remember it as a place where at night I would go down te from Telegraph Hill and the fog was rolling in. Mm -hmm. you know, what a wonderful feeling that was, you know. Uh, it's it's very pict picturesque. Yeah, um, yeah. But when you when you're on the streets and people are begging you for money and they're defecating, etc., and and it smells bad and it's just you know it's the way New York I think was maybe thirty or forty years ago. I think they've sort of switched a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of. I, Okay, so so Alex, wait, wait, wait. But Brian Neary had his hand. No, no, no. I, Mike had his hand up first. I was I wasn't going to cut in because I wanted to be respectful. Okay, for Mike. Go, go Mike. I appreciate that. Uh, so that being said, Alex. Okay, so when you're in your heyday doing the comedy stuff and all that in in in, in the, uh, the '90s and 2000s, mm -hmm. were you thinking about San Francisco from the Vertigo days? Like, were you reminiscing already? Like living there, you were in your heyday, but were you were still reminiscing for the old days? You know what was going through my mind? This may sound really ugly, but I was thinking how well I was getting even. <laughs> Which here, one? I was, here I was, a top morning show in San Francisco, a town that would have nothing to do with me years earlier. Mm. And my entire thought was, God, I'm getting even. Mm. You know, um, but I did appreciate San Francisco more. You got to realize when you grow up somewhere, like I grew up in San Francisco and, and you're there, you go, Oh no, I got to go across the fucking bridge one more time. You know, mm -hmm. I got, I, I lived in Marin. We got to got to go to San Francisco. I got to go across that. I must've gone across the bit golden gate bridge in my lifetime, two, 3000 times, maybe, you know, yeah. and then like I, leave, I leave San Francisco. I moved to New York. I lived there for a while. You know, I, li I actually moved to Texas and then to Minneapolis and then to uh, Chicago and finally into New York. And, and uh, then I moved back to San Francisco, which I thought was a step backward. It actually proved to be maybe the highlight of my career. Uh, and, and when I first went back, the first time I went across the Golden Gate Bridge and went, wow, look at that. Isn't this beautiful? And I, yeah. all the other times I drove across it and never thought about it twice because you live there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I, I returned home, I think I appreciated San Francisco more than when I was growing up there. Uh, you know. 
Yeah, and I think I think when you do those kind of things, it's still there. But I think like the thing you said about the the height of the skyscrapers there now. Mm-hmm. I I've been there like the last three weekends, and and when you take that one turn off 101 and you see everything there, mm-hmm. you know, you see the Salesforce building, you just see this big clump of buildings. You don't see like Alex, like you said, you know, they had those restrictions, so you can see. There was see a the restriction in San Francisco that you could not build any building. This was after the earthquake mm-hmm. that you couldn't build a building <laughs> higher than 20 stories yeah because now it's all just a hunk of skyscrapers but, instead of seeing those rolling hills but what it does is it takes the hills and it obliterates them mm-hmm. because it makes them it makes everything look a little bit more level you know yeah, what i'm that, saying that salesforce tower is ugly as fuck i don't yeah, know what right in the middle of everything. Building. I it ruins it's, the entire skyline of that city and they didn't build the foundations right. If you read about it, a lot of those buildings are leaning They're significantly. Leaning. There's people that leave that building yeah. it right there. They're, they put balls on the raw on the floor, and the balls roll toward the window because the building is 14 inches out of center. Is that one on the floor? The one that started sinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, people are putting like mar- marbles. Yeah, yeah. They put a marble on the floor, and the, ball, the marble rolls toward the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's ghosts. Well, we used to do we used to do my radio show in the mornings from uh, when I moved over to a station called Live 105. We did it uh, from uh, from the first floor of a building uh, uh, down on Market Street. Uh, I, I've and, been there. <laughs> yeah, and um, it, this was a horrible, horrible studio. This was the kind of thing when when I first got a job there, I'd never seen the studio, and I went into it and I immediately called my business manager and I said, I can't work in that place. The places it's too small. It's a pigsty. They had they had birds, pigeons that were roosting in between the wall and the covering to the wall or whatever, mm-hmm. and they would keep shitting on you as you were working. That's how bad this place was. Wow. I remember they moved out of it into another very modern building and had very modern studios, but in the meantime, somebody else bought that building. It's now, uh, what do you call it? Um, Condos? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, <laughs> God damn it. Stu Leonard's. No, it's, yeah, it's Stu Leonard's. It's been changed into a Stu Leonard's. No. It's, it's an SRO? No, it's. Uh, Costco. It's, it's, tw- it's Twitter. <laughs> it's the Twitter building. Oh. Yeah. So I, I think it got rid of the pigeon problem. You know, my my program director kept complaining because he'd be working, and all of a sudden this pigeon dropping would fall on. Was, his was that was at Market and Ninth, right? Yeah, it was called the Furniture Mart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, got a, I got a ticket. I got a ticket coming to see you one morning off of Market. You know, you're supposed to turn left on Ninth, and I did, and I got a fucking ticket. Oh, really? No. <laughs> I used to do trade shows Just, at that Furniture Mart building. You owe me seven. You owe me seventy-two dollars, Alex. <laughs> really, really, dude. We don't have any people watching today. I don't know. Who okay. Oh, by the way, listen to this. this is Hello. Hey. What, what the hell is that? Nobody's home. Oh, wow. <laughs> no. Maybe I should just quit the night show, and we should do this like two days a week or something. There you go. I'm up for it. This is Again, nice. nobody's home. Everybody's in LA this week. Well, it's for the next couple of days, so. Strange being oh, home alone. We have, have like five nine people, people now. Home alone. Um, huh? Yes, yeah, being it's strange being home alone when you have five people in the house usually. Yeah. Yeah. So they're in L.A. The uh, Tiffany's uh, grand grandfather passed away um, mm. over the weekend. So oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, so I have to work, but they they. So, went so what, what what happened to like where's uh, where's uh, the little brat? No, she's with them. Oh, really? Oh. So it's bizarre. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, some of them have gone, but then all of them, some of them stay and back and forth this is the first time, like four days. So, and of course, you know, I'm just sitting here doing nothing, bored to death. <laughs> okay. So she's not there. She's not there, right? Not there. Yeah. Right. So right I have four there. days. Oh, hold on a second. Does she make you make the bed every morning? Does she, Ooh. or does she Tiffany? make, huh? Tiffany? Yeah. Does she make the bed or you make the bed? No, neither one of us make the bed. <laughs> I never get to at, night, at night, I straighten up the bed so I can sleep. Yeah. Okay, because Marjorie 
has to have that bed bed every morning. If I'm, if I sleep too late, she'll start making it while I'm still in it. You know, he's in the bed at three in the afternoon. What can I tell you? Well, you know, I, as a bachelor, I sometimes never made my bed. Okay. Just like you, Brian, you and Tiffany didn't make it kind of neatened it up. You know, whatever somebody came over, I'd make it. Yeah, you know. grimy sheets with dust and stuff in it. What? What are you, what are you complaining about? Your I'm filthy sheets. When you don't clean the sheets out, you get stuck. I clean the sheets constantly. Who does the laundry? Who does the laundry? Do. She does. I do. It doesn't matter. It's just right, right in the do. other room. Alex, when did you ever do laundry? <laughs> If you wanted me to do the laundry, I'd do it. But what's the big deal? You just but take, don't say that you've just been doing the, it. You just take you've the colors. You take the colors, and I'm not speaking racially here. You take the colors, <laughs> and you put it in the in the, in the washer, and you turn the washer on to uh, wash, and that's it. You put some soap in there, and you're good to go. You want to do the whites? Put that in. Put a little Clorox in. Put a little more soap in. Boom. You take care of it. What's the big deal about doing the wash? Nothing. You're on when, your own. When my kids do it, <laughs> they do that part of it. When my kids do it, they do that part of it. And then daddy reminds them to put them in the dryer. And then they put everything in the dryer and they start another load. Then guess what happens after that? Daddy reminds them to take it out. And then they it's forget. Not, it's in there for like two weeks. I've done my laundry since I was like 10. So yeah. I don't like anybody doing my laundry. Oh, really? Oh, I don't like that. Oh, yeah. I can totally about, un understand the, the, that. The Dr. Shrink is in now. What? Why Why is that? I don't know. Well, I'm and then my shirt, I'm the same. because I'm tall. I'm the same because, way. I'm, exactly. I think my, yeah. because I'm tall, my shirts, I dry just a little bit, and then I hang everything in the bathroom. And then when it dries the next day, then I move them in. One time, her mom shoved everything from the wash, all my shirts in the dryer, and just dried them. And they all shrunk. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mike Chisholm, you say the same thing with you, right? Yeah, but I think my issue is more a skid mark thing. If anyone's going to handle those things, it's me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Skid marks, yeah. It's, uh, uh, look, your career is now talking down to talking about skid marks. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> Trucker Steve thinks we're talking about a, a truck accident. So. <laughs> <laughs> me too, Alex. Yeah. The only time I didn't do my own laundry was when I had a maid in Brazil. Hmm. Oh, really? I've been doing my own laundry since I was a little kid. Well, I have a maid here. She's called Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> are we are we going to give a title to this as the, the episode of the Bickersons? Or? <laughs> the last, no, this may be the last episode. You can probably <laughs> list this uh, episode as The Divorce Begins. Yeah. <laughs> this week on the Vickersons with Alex. You know, yeah. we look, we wake up in the morning and look at each other. And if we had any idea about divorce or separating or whatever, we just go, I guess this is just as good as it's going to get. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Right now, you old bag. <laughs> I'll go back. We'll go. We'll go back here. Yeah. <laughs> this week at the Bennett home. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know. I mean, listen. We went through COVID together. That that's saying something. That's yeah. true. That one of us is both. Both of us are still alive. You know, <laughs> we didn't kill each other off. Uh, by the way, Shecky, gonna go get your third shot. Was that like next October or something? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, you know, I I I, I just I, I read something that was very interesting uh, uh, today. And I was telling Marjorie about it. Uh, I think it was in the Times. Who who published it? I'm trying to remember. Um, it was, uh, I believe. Um, no, it wasn't that. Okay. Well, anyway, it was something like it was like. Uh, uh, the, the times or whatever and it talked about a professor who gave a lecture once and he asked these uh, his students he said if god came down and said that he was going to uh, give you a longer life uh he was going to give you make sure that you had to work less spend more time with friends and family uh you were going to make more money and, and life and health and everything were going to be better than they had ever been on the face of the earth 
And the only thing you had to give up for it was he had to kill a thousand people. Would you do it? And the class universally said, no, we wouldn't do it. You know? And then he said, every year there are 40,000 deaths from car crashes, automobile accidents, 40,000 deaths. And we don't even think about that. We'd rather have our cars and not think about the 40,000 deaths. We, we just completely uh, 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 throw them out, out of our mind. And he said, uh, basically, if it's something that's salient, like COVID, every day they're giving us a death toll. But if COVID were something like the American automobile, we wouldn't even, somehow it would just disappear into the, into the woodwork. Does that make sense? Yeah, but this is a once in a lifetime event, Alex. Well, I agree. I so agree. I, so Alex, when I get up to a thousand people dead because of my driving, mm -hmm. I get to live longer. <laughs> no, you, you have to stop driving. <laughs> no, no, I haven't got to a thousand yet. I'm only in the 900s. Oh, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's like how many more people die from aspirin every year than from the Johnson and Johnson shot. But, you, you know, you still got to do this. It, it's weird, right? It's a it's, a, it's a, a false comparison because we're not individually killing 40,000 people with our cars. So me stop driving isn't going to yeah, save 40,000 lives. Still, it's, his point was we just completely we don't suddenly say, well, what, what do we do about the American automobile? You know? We don't get into this big uh, rush to take care of that problem of 40,000 deaths a year from automobile accidents, which perhaps Every could be prevented. You everything's know, Russian roulette. Roulette. From cheeseburgers to walking across the street, everything's Russian roulette. <laughs> everything's it's all just Russian a thought. Roulette. Exactly. Was Charlie Wallace with us today? He was. Yeah. What happened to Charlie? Charlie, where'd you go? I was going to ask you a question, but then you went. Okay. No, he had a shooting at a, two blocks away from him over the weekend. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the, the latest mass shooting? Uh, which which mass shooting? Pick one. Yeah. You know, yeah. read it correctly. One, one day, everyone will be, will be able to say there was a mass shooting. Two there been something like 137 mass shootings so far this year. No, if, this month. If you go by the it's definition. Yeah, no, days, yes. yeah uh, but... I, uh, that many? You know what the definition is, Alex? They defined it as four or more. Four people not well, there including the shooter. There was one every day last week. Yep. Hmm. Oh. And some days there were two. <laughs> one, of, one, of my, one of my gun nut friends, who of course I refer to as an amosexual, he, uh, he <laughs> he's an amosexual because um, he just romances that little piece that he carries around. But uh, yeah. He, he argues that the, the, the reason we have so many mass shootings is because it, it should be 10 or more. That would So these ones don't matter because it's not 10 people being shot. So it's not a mass shooting. Oh, what oh a my. genius. <laughs> Those amosexuals, you just can't deal with them. I was sitting there. We were sitting there today watching the, uh, you know, the, it's on MSNBC all day, the prosecution and defense winding up on the Chauvin trial. And uh, oh, here comes Charles. Must, something must have happened to him on the Chauvin trial. And, and Marjorie was saying, you know, about the lawyer, oh, listen to what he said, blah, blah. And I'm trying to convince her that the lawyer for Chauvin is my hero. And I'll tell you why he's my hero. Because as a lawyer, that's the kind of case you don't want to take, okay? You're going to get death threats. Uh, your, your family's going to be violated. I mean, you're going to be reviled in public. And the thing is, that's why you took the job. You know, and if nobody's going to defend Chauvin, then you haven't got justice. You know, well, so we should every really... racist in, He's also a hero to every racist in the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when he's sitting there trying to show the jury why his guy is innocent, he may not believe it himself, but that's his job. Okay, that's what he's hired to do. And he has to do the best job possible, because if he isn't doing the best job possible, then uh, he's not living up to people getting a fair trial. Yes, uh, Mike. I had a lawyer on my podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and that was 100% what he said. He said, look, call me. He goes, call me whatever you want. You can say I'm rose-colored or whatever. I believe in the system, and I believe the system will shake out how it's supposed to shake out, and I do the absolute best I can for whoever it is that I'm defending, um, and I rely on the system to do what it's supposed to do. 
That's I, what that's what he said about that. Yeah. And I, I was just like, well, whatever makes you sleep at night. I think I asked a lawyer once a question. If you get somebody who comes in and you listen to him and you say to yourself, I know this guy is guilty, you know, got to be guilty. I said, what do you do? He said, well, I do one of two things. Either I don't take the case, you know, because I, I could not objectively defend the guy. Yeah. Or I tell the guy, well, let's plead your case. You know, admit you did it and let's plead your case. Uh, he said, outside of that, he said, I don't really want them to let me know whether they did it. I, I think yeah. that's the common line, but this guy chose, <laughs> to, this guy chose to take this case, right? You don't have to do it. And don't you think that reflects on, on no, the person? I think, I think it reflects on his desire to, to do the job he signed up for, you know? He could have taken a different case, uh, you know, if you, I just don't get it. I don't get why you would choose to defend the guy who did. Well, he should have done, done it for the PR. Because if you win, you become a be very wealthy speak. lawyer. Exactly. You get the PR, you're in the paper. Every I day. don't know. Hey, but that still is morally reprehensible. It's All I'm saying is if you choose exactly to take right. that case, I think you're morally reprehensible. Yeah. Or, or he can like, actually like, believe if, any, if, if anybody takes that case as morally reprehensible, then who's going to take the case? Or somebody who, guy like this guy. No, somebody, some ambulance chaser. Or, yeah. or somebody who believes I'm a lawyer. My job is to do the best job possible for a client. And then well, if I'm not, the if guy I, if I'm not there in that court. No, you, exactly. you think of all the injustice in the world, the hundreds of thousands of cases, this is the guy you choose to defend? <laughs> Well, right. nobody else will do it. Yeah. Then the, then the whole point Somebody's got to do it because then the whole point he, of public he has defense. a right. Char Charlie yeah. says exactly how I feel. Somebody's got to do it. I agree. He has the right to a defense, but he could be a public defender. It doesn't defender. have to. Exactly. Walk in and say, I want to defend this guy. Who's you paying want, for you it? want a the public police defense. foundation? What? Police department? Who's paying his legal fees? Well, Stephen, you're, you're drawing the line, though, that if a lawyer believes that the guy's guilty and takes the case to create a myth that will get them off it's morally re reprehensible yeah, but but if no, he i don't know that i would say that in every case because i think some guilt is less heinous than other guilt i think step stepping on a guy's neck for nine minutes is worse than robbing a bank yes and he's not saying that this guy hey, there's it didn't have his knee on his neck but he's arguing that the the that action is not what killed him you know yeah. Uh, they, they, there's another start, argument he threw out today the that the EMTs didn't get there fast yeah, enough. I'm not arguing so against his the system. I'm not arguing against the system, and I'm not arguing against his right to yeah. a defense. But your, <laughs> yeah. your line has to do with how cruel the crime is to humanity, as opposed to the anything else. Yeah. So if, you know, if, if a I person, think, if I think this guy is immoral for doing this, so what? I mean, he's yeah. you know. No, I, I I actually agree with you. I think it's immoral to do it, but. Um, when I think the immor I think it's even it's even clearer that it's immoral when the lawyer knows up front. Yeah, this guy this guy cruelly killed somebody. Absolutely. But my job is to create such fog that he doesn't have to pay the price for it. Speaking of killing, That's right. uh, Charlie Wallace, a couple of blocks from you, a mass shooting. Well, it's more like a couple of miles, but yeah, it was right down the road from for me. Yeah, where that where that guy shot up his family. Yeah. So, so how did you do it? Three people died. Wow, that's not a mass shooting. Yeah, who, who were the who, three or more? And, and they don't have to die; they have to get shot. Right, Scott. Well, I think he shot two more. So it was, it was, Scott, yes, it, it, that was way down the road from you, right? Well, I was I was within a uh, a mile of a mass shooting where the guy killed eight. Wow. Oh, well, then you're Nine better than including him, I guess. But well, yeah. you're the winner today. You're the winner today. <laughs> hey, if you're within a mile, can you hear it? No, I didn't hear it, but I actually had talked to that guy who was the shooter. Wow. He, uh, he used to go to the same uh, wow. uh, 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 bar that I used to. Saloon. And, uh, and I, I used to do a lot of day drinking back then. That's why I don't go to bars. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and yeah, I talked to this guy several times, and uh, wow. ended up killing his wife in a at a, a Dallas Cowboy watching party. Cowboy oh, fans, 
Jeez. I, by the how about way, them cow cowboys? How fans? about them cowboys? Yeah. By the way, you, your hair during COVID has grown <laughs> so long. Well, I, I, I was out. I, I went to the gym. I mowed the grass, and I took a shower before I came here. So I'm letting it. I'm letting it air out. Yeah, but now, so, look at it. It's halfway down your back. I yeah. used to have long hair. Wow! It look wasn't at that. that long. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's a little long. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it too. My wife doesn't like it, but you know. Well, that's probably why <laughs> her head. That's probably why you're keeping it. Isn't that the reason why Letterman keeps his beard? Yeah. 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 Because it pisses the wife off, right? Pisses everyone off. I'll tell you, every time Marjorie sees him on television, she doesn't go, what a great beard. She goes, when's he going to cut that thing off? <laughs> well, what did we see him the other day before he grew the beard, remember? Yeah. And I said, well, he was a good-looking guy. Now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it's like um, a beggar out on the street. Th no, but uh, didn't you say that there was some funeral you went to? And oh the, yeah, and I thought he was a beggar on the street. There was a bum on the street, and you walked by him, and suddenly realized it was Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you, you couldn't mistake him, you know. Um, no, no, and I thought like because it was right in front of the church, and the guy was standing there, and I thought you know, the guy is standing there because he's <laughs> because he gets money from the mourners as they walk in. <laughs> Good thing he wasn't drinking. Well, I, I tried a while back. I tried growing a beard. Uh, and one side grows out okay, the other side grows out badly. And every it doesn't night, match. Marjorie would say, when are you going to cut that thing off? When are you going to cut that thing off? I don't like that. I don't want you to have that. And I kept growing it because she was pissed off. Well, it didn't match. You know? It didn't match. Yeah, this side is uh, always a little lighter than the other side. Or maybe this side, I can't remember. Bold. Yeah, yeah. When I grew mine, I used to get frisked at the airport and called Osama, so I got rid of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got, did you have a beard? No, you just have a mustache now. I can't tell from the lighting. Oh. You know. He's got the mini uh, letter going Frisco on. has a really great beard. And uh, uh, we have another guy, Jeff, who calls the night show and has called here a couple of times. And he's got a great beard. And I wish I could grow a beard like that if I could, you know, because you can keep it neat, you know. And it looks distinguished. How about how about Steve? Look, Steve's fine. And, and I let mine get Letterman esque at the first six months of the pandemic. I didn't touch it, and it, it got pretty. Well, what's the reason? You're not yeah. going out to dinner, right? You know, I hate shaving. Yeah, yeah. Well, Steve, you look like a professor. Letterman doesn't. <laughs> well, I, was, <laughs> I was a professor. Letterman. Letterman, <laughs> Letterman looks like a wild man. He's just pissed that Leno got that gig and not him. That's all. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I, I like I like Dave's beard. Am I the only one? My wife loves it. Oh, I like it. I love his beard. I like it. I, I, think like it. I was you watching a clip from a show from 08. Actually, Shecky, one of your uh, videos was in there, uh, or one of your, one of the films. They showed a clip from the old zombie uh, black and white movies. I figured that must have been something you threw in there. Well, Clan Nine. Maybe I'm not sure, but it was an old black and white zombie movie. But uh, or Mummy, the Mummy, that's what it was. Um, yeah. But it's weird seeing Dave without the beard now. I like him. I like him with it. I think it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, of course, because you got a beard. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's yeah, it. he just came out of the Ozarks. Yeah, great. <laughs> He's cooking meth back at the back at the you know the back of thirty. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just waiting to see a bird fly out of there eventually. You know, <laughs> I mean, you got to admit that's a that's a uh, as opposed to a beard like Mike Chisholm has, or a beard like Steve Bender has, uh, or a beard like Len the Frisco has, or even like I have. His beard is it's the Ozark, huh? It's an Ozark beard. Yeah, he's it, going. It, he's going. Yeah. yeah. It's old yeah. Kentucky Colonel beard. <laughs> you know, well, he'll he'll shave it once he gets it caught in his fly. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be interesting the day he cuts it off if he ever does. You know, I'm betting he won't. Yeah. You I think he won't either. Check. I mean, you know the guy somewhat. No, I don't think he will. Don't forget, he had the beard when he was in college. He had the beard between the morning and the evening show, first evening show. It's during the writer's show. He, well, he always let his beard grow out. I remember once on the show, he actually cut it off. 
Uh, he went well, that was another, after the writer's strike. After the writer's strike, he came back, he had a beard, and he cut it off. But I would imagine, and I don't know if this is true, that he grew beards pretty fast. I mean, that his yeah. hair grew fast, and that the, one of the reasons he didn't shave during a, a writer's strike or whatever was if you got to shave every day to do the damn show. And every he didn't day, want to shave. You he don't didn't want like to shave. shaving. Right. Um, I only shave about once a week, actually. And get rid of the this area here but you can't see it here with this camera and so on so unless everybody wants to blow the picture up okay boy we have nobody watching us today we should we should have a new show called manscaping with alex bennett, <laughs> with alex bennett. yeah yeah um, do you use a different camera on your nighttime show or no i use i use a similar camera similar different like, razor it's the same make the same brand. what are those same wipes brand. that you got in the mail alex <laughs> the dude tell wipes? them about that the, the what i got in the mail the wipes Why? somebody sent me somebody sent me somebody sent me dude wipes <laughs> um, for nasty farts and the morning somebody after sent me a triple pack of dude wipes <laughs> Which you know, it's basically the same kind of liquid ass wipes you can buy at the store under what name I used to buy them. You know, and they're good. I mean, hell, they're flushable. Thank you for no demonstrations. Get you really clean. You know, yeah, they're flushable, but not in our toilet. Nothing's flushable in our toilet. We have water pressure that's just almost non-existent. So. Uh, you have to flush like five times or something. All those lead pipes. <laughs> hmm? You know what we got going on? They're, they're pointing the building. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Do they? Do you have to point your, your house? Because you have brick, right? I had my house repointed. Yeah. How, about that? How long did it take them? Several weeks. Okay. Imagine, two, years, two years. Imagine doing that same thing in our building. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and these guys have this thing, and it's right outside our window. It's either above our window or right at our window today it is. And they're hammering away, and they're chipping away, and the dust is flying everywhere. And, I mean, it's been going on for weeks and weeks. And it's weeks. a lot of work. And they haven't, even, they haven't even moved down to do... Well, do you floor. want the building to fall down? <laughs> because the mortar is... 80 years old? Yeah, well, the more... Point. Probably 120 years so old. So what they do yeah. with pointing is they chip out the mortar that's loose and what, refill it? Refill yeah. it. Oh. Yeah, I, I and then it makes house. bricks or any bricks that need to be replaced will get replaced. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I did my house over a course of about seven or eight weekends. I'd go out for a couple hours and do a, a section. It's not that hard to do. Yeah. Oh, you did it yourself? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you hit it with a little bit with a chisel to get the loose stuff out and you repack it and is, is that expensive spray. is that expensive shaggy yeah i think i spent seven grand on it maybe i can't remember yeah, yeah well that's pretty that's wow. a two two-story house yeah. yeah brick house brick house so so what the i guess the the thing is don't build in brick anymore is that the thing because mm -hmm. they, they, they they well no you build in something else you're gonna have other problems yeah. No. Yep. Have to brick. How often in the age of a house or a building do you have to like point? I think that was the only time in 60 years a house was repointed. It oh, depends right. on your climate. Yeah. Okay. If, if you're somewhere so it gets super cold and super hot, moisture gets in and cracks, it, it expands and cracks. So, so is it the law here in New York that you have to point it every, every so often? No, it's just no. To, get, to get an inspection. Or to get a certificate they have the place, that has to be inspected, and that's part of it. Oh, and if there's too much uh, stuff falling apart and yeah. cracks, okay. Yeah, plus you want that stuff falling off the building and hitting someone on the head down below getting sued. Yeah, and what happened was, though, they put up the, the you know, like the, the thing around the building so that if anything falls, the scaffolding. It hit the, with the scaffolding. And uh, it was up for a year before they started. Mm hmm I mean, um, there's a documentary about that on HBO. The fella talks about the scaffoldings in New York and what a scam it is. Really? It's a big business it is. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly, I heard it costs our landlord $50,000 a month to have the scaffolding. 
but it, but it gives right? homes to the homeless because yes, they can it live under the does. scaffolding. We had uh, we had like a whole uh, a whole separate apartment that was created under that scaffolding by the homeless. <laughs> Yeah, but they finally went somewhere else, didn't they, Marjorie? Yeah. They found a better scaffold. <laughs> they, they moved on up to the east side. The newer one. <laughs> Is it a deluxe apartment in the sky? Well, part of me, part of the, 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 the non-liberal side of me went, would these bums please get out of here? And the really liberal side of me said, yeah, but we got to do something for them. You know, we've got to somehow do something so they don't have to sleep under this scaffolding. But my feeling is they like sleeping under that scaffolding. They yeah, like their yeah, I don't think they like it. Well, I'm. I don't. It's not. I'm. The, maybe I mean, it's like, all relevant. Maybe like is not the <laughs> best term to use. But it's something that they. It asserts well, it a certain. Well, protects you. It protects huh? you. The elements a little bit. Well, it, it, you know, I mean, like they were sleeping on the subways. Who wants to sleep on a subway? Unless you do accidentally like Marjorie and then miss her stop by five <laughs> stops. Uh, but who wants to fall asleep on the subway? Nobody. Who uh, wants to be homeless? But there were Nobody. some people that, that actually lived for that. That was, their, that was part of their life. You but know. you know, there are encampments in the subway tunnels where people live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but doesn't that speak to us as a society that that exists? Absolutely. And, and shouldn't we then do something to take care of it? Well, what do you mean by we? What I mean, what can we do? <laughs> <laughs> what, what can we do? I mean, well, sort of protect. inviting them up for dinner and to use my guest room. <laughs> yeah, uh, you could do that. We could elect people who will do something for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, but but some of so the San Jose PD I was talking to uh, like a month ago, mm -hmm. uh, he was from Oakland. So he's a young kid actually, and he wanted to see if he wanted to really be a police. So he went to Oakland. So he's a police officer there for about five years, and he came down to San Jose. So two years in San Jose, he said they have the same the same program that they did in Oakland. Uh, they're doing it in San Jose where they have some space. They actually is police department property and they're going to build some shelters for them. And they said the problem in Oakland is that they didn't want it. You know, there are some people that want it, but the other people just want to be left alone. So there's some big encampments right in this area. And this area is, you know, it's like right on the freeway when you're going on the freeway and stuff. Mm -hmm. and it's right. Really bad. And they, they just they clean them out. And then like, you know, a week later, they're back and they, they keep trying to pull them out and they don't want to go. Well, what happened with us was here in New York uh, during the beginning of COVID, uh, Cuomo chased them out of the subways, uh, closed down the subways from noon, mid one o'clock in the morning till five o'clock. So they can so they could sanitize it and, and sanitize it and just got them out of there. Well, when they got out of there, that's when they showed up under our scaffolding, wow. you know, because mm. well, it's just like a balloon. You push one side of the balloon, it comes out yeah. somewhere else. You know, it's not like you're, you're getting rid of the problem. You're simply dissipating it somewhere else. Well, and the first, half, first half of the pandemic, Union Square Park down here, because they all, you know, they got everybody out of the subway station of 14th Street. Yeah. Then they took over the park. You so, know, my feeling yeah. was, listen, I heard the uh, the Plaza Hotel was available. There was nobody booking into the Plaza. <laughs> so you put them in there, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you wonder if all these off office buildings that aren't going to ever bring people back to work, is that going to become low income housing? Checking well, what they're here. doing with a lot of the hotels that went out of business, they're converting them into low income housing. Yeah. yeah. Shecky, sure. you're out in Queens. Do you have yes. a homeless problem out in Queens? I mean, encampments of homeless people? I have never seen one, though I hear some people live in the park down the block from me, but I've never seen them. But you've never seen them. I wonder why. Well, it's up it's in the more, woods. I, I mean, you have to walk more in the wooded area. I wonder why it's more endemic to Manhattan or to San Francisco than it mm -hmm. is to Queens. Better man's protecting Queens. Better restaurants? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> more people who are likely to throw you a, do throw you a dollar, maybe. That too. If you're a beggar, you're not going to get any money here in right. you know, you Jamaica want, States. You want a high traffic people. location, yeah. Yeah, well, I've got to get out there soon, Shecky. I think it's time for me to hop on a train. But first, I have to be able to walk to one. I took a walk the other day around the Harlem Mirror. It was like I, 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 my legs were hardly working. I mean, it was yeah. like after a year of being indoors a lot. 
it really has taken its uh, its toll. But I think I can walk to the subway. You know, <laughs> I think I can. I'll help you. Usually subway. take a cab to the subway. <laughs> well, I, do, I take. A, I, do take that. I do take a car to the subway. To be honest with you, uh, uh, and then I take the subway. It, it's a whole thing. And then you call. Then you call me, and I pick you up at the subway. Yeah. So I don't really have to walk. And we have a wheelchair at your place now, right? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> oh, nice desk chair. Yeah. Hey, listen, we we get it out in the street. We've done an hour here. I don't want to waste your time any more than this. Record low number of people watching it, but <laughs> to hell with it. I like you. Right. I just enjoy having you here and talking to you and, you know. It's because it's a Mandy, nice afternoon. It's because Mandy's yeah. not here. Yeah. Well, Mandy is, is here when she can sneak it in, is yeah. what happens, you know. I mean, it's like. She yeah, has a job. Yeah, her job is important to her. So. <laughs> yes, it's important to everyone. Yeah, <laughs> apparently not to me. <laughs> well, I, I you know I, I miss we'll go over a little bit here. I miss not having a job, you know. Sure, it gave me a certain something that I had to do. I mean, I do the. I you got to take a shower every day. I do the show <laughs> four nights a week, okay, <laughs> and this one on Monday, but it's not the same, you know. It's yeah, not, but you would. Do the serious show from home if you still had that gig. Well, I would have to do it from home. You know, that would be the way things would be done. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. still, you know, it's still, um, uh, I just don't feel like I'm working. Okay. I don't have to have that, uh, that same thing where I put on some clothes and I go I hail a cab and I go to the studio and I walk up and I walk into the studio and I sit in front of a microphone. Oh, and there's, there's, there's Albert and there's somebody else who's also working as another assistant. And uh, we begin the show and we do the show and then I go home. Here, I just go from the bedroom to the, to the uh, third the room, the office. And that's it. You know, I, I, I do the same thing. doing anything. You know? and your point hey, I is... haven't ejected anybody in over a year. <laughs> and I haven't what? Ejected anybody from a ball game in over a year. Oh, <laughs> right. So you happen. Yeah, right. You miss that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're out. Yeah. Say it. Say it. What do you say? You, you, you... I just say, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he's that... gone. Out of he here. didn't leave in 60 seconds. Game's over. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Well, I think we'll call this to a close, but boy, I, it's, right. again, it's always a pleasure to be with you people because it's uh, it's terrific. It really is. And um, we'll do it again next uh, next week. You'll all be here. And, sure. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do it. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. See you.